Well, hello everyone. I am starting a new video series today. I may have alluded to it in some of my previous videos here. I have a smelting kiln that was given to me to do a sort of a product review of. Uh, I should start by thanking Dave at 911 Metallurgist and Pat from Quick Kiln who have sent me the KK8 smelting kiln. And we are going to be doing a complete little uh, video review uh, of this as well as some how-to videos on smelting. Smelting, melting, uh, capelling, some assay stuff. Today we're just uh, setting up. We're getting the stuff uh, put together and figured out and we also have to temper the kiln. Uh, the fire brick, this refractory fire brick here, the first time it gets heated shrinks about 5%. So the idea here is that you heat it up once and then you tighten all the clamps to keep it all together. So that will be one of our jobs today. Plus just sort of figuring the whole thing out. Dad is slowly sort of assembling and seeing how it all goes together. We just had to run off to the hardware store and buy ourselves some safety equipment. I need a face shield and some gloves and stuff like that. And hopefully the snow will hold off because it is threatening to snow on us here today. And I know things like this, kilns with lots of heat, do not take well to moisture. So let's hope the snow holds off. we got all sorts of stuff to play with here. We've got all sorts of different uh, samples that we can smelt. And I've got a bunch of dirty gold that we're going to maybe even melt and make a, ourselves a little button today after we get the machine all set up and tempered and everything. Anyhow, I'll be back in just a moment and show you the whole kiln. Okay, let's look at this uh, KK8 kiln for a second. Now this is from Quick Kilns there. Um, business does have a proper name. I should get that card out here so I can show it to you. I'll put a clip, a, a, a snapshot of the guy's business name in this video. But we'll talk about the quick clone for just a little bit. Um, this is the 8 inch version, the KK8. He does make a 6 inch and a 2 inch and there's even the big one, the 12 inch. So he's got all different sizes. Uh, this one's big enough here that we can do some bigger smelting in. Uh, he also has the little cupelling kilns, the little small ones just for cupelling. They're specially designed for it. And it's made in segments, different segments, so that as you're pulling your crucible out, you can take it down to the halfway point. You can easily grab that uh, crucible and pull it out. Nice stainless steel outer uh, bands on it that can be tightened to keep up with the shrinking of the refractory material. We have a pyrometer to tell us how hot it's getting inside there and apparently, looking at the video, you're supposed to have it just barely into the flame, so just barely sticking inside. Uh, port down here for the burner to go in, keeps the flame circling around inside. That little brick inside there is just to keep the crucible sitting up a bit so you can grab it easier. Keep it off the bottom of the kiln. Very nice and clean and well manufactured for sure. And Dad's just over here assembling the hoses and valves and everything right now on the burner so that we can... Uh, Using all the proper adjustable wrenches? Yes. Good. Using the proper tool for the job. So we can start uh, putting it together and see if we can fire it once. Now the, in the instructions it tells you how to temper it. You have to heat it up a certain amount for a certain amount of time and let it sit and then it'll heat a bit more and whatnot. And then at a certain time frame you take uh, these clamps here and tighten them up and it brings the stainless steel back into the shrunken refractory material and keeps it all nice and tight because this stuff does actually crack under the heat and you have to hold it together. It doesn't prevent it from doing its thing. It still works just fine, but you just need to make sure that the cracked 
material stays together, and that's why we tighten the bands around it. Look at that, there's the torch in place. Looking good. We need to find a propane cylinder, because right now that's sucking air. Oh, look at that, we've got propane. So as usual, Dad's not accepting uh, the way the machine is uh, designed, so he's created <laughs> his own stand here, rather than using the stand that comes with it. And I'm glad to see he's not just critical of my construction of things, he's critical of other people's construction too. And quite often my own. We've set it up on bricks right now, so it's just not on the wooden table, and therefore the little stand that comes with it just is a little high, so he's got something else supporting it for now. And we're, oh, should take that out for the initial firing. We seem to be all ready for the initial firing. Dad is just right now reading the book of words to uh, get the procedure down of how long we have to do everything and what temperatures. And, ooh, I should find a wrench for these to tighten those up. Oh, looks like a screwdriver will work too. screwdriver. And we'll be able to get this going for the first time. Probably shouldn't have paper sitting right beside it. That just sounds like a fire waiting to happen. So Dad's just getting the uh, nut driver right now for tightening this up. Um, I brought a screwdriver, but that he's got a nut driver here for that. Make sure he's got the right one. Excellent. And we're going to light it for the first time. Now, the uh, manufacturer suggests lighting it right here and letting it blow in. And he says it's going to pop and squirt and make all sorts of weird noises until the flame will actually propagate all the way down, and then it starts sounding like a jet engine. Now, I don't know why he suggests to light it there rather than lighting inside. It might just be a way to keep your hand out from inside the kiln. But let's see what happens. Oh, we got gas. We have a lighter that doesn't want to light. Oh! Okay. We lit it from inside. And now, I think, since it's up and lit, we can start assembling the top one place. That's a good way of burning your fingers there, Dad. I think the whole idea is to grab from the sides, not from the inside. Testing. Okay, how long are we supposed to have it at low, te at low heat? It's supposed to bring it up to 1700, 1800, idle temperature. 1700 or 1800 to... And hold it there for 30 minutes. For 30 minutes to let that refractory material start shrinking the way it's supposed to. We have a few uh, little things burning off, little oils and whatnot from uh, manufacturing, which I guess that's to be expected, for sure. Oh, it's starting to glow inside already. That didn't take long. It actually takes a bit of time. It'll take us a half hour or an hour to do, break in, before we can start playing with melting stuff. He's hot in there already. That did not take long. Get a 1500, well, just under 1500 already inside there. I'm not going to videotape for half an hour as it heats up, so sign off for now. We'll come back in a bit. We've been going about 10 minutes or so now, and um, we're supposed to maintain it at 1,700 degrees, and we're now over 2,000, so we're turning it down to see if we can uh, try to maintain yeah, that I've lower temperature. It, I already turned it down once. 
but we've got down really low. It's not real. I assume it's not using much uh, propane at all right now. Hardly any. Um, so obviously a very um, well insulated and uh, efficient machine. Does it say how far the uh, pyrometer is supposed to be sticking in? Because we have it in about a half inch right now. I wonder if that's too uh, much. We have to go someplace else and we did you were supposed to. I think I read that in the video. Read that in the video. Heard that in the video. Because <laughs> there's a video that goes with this machine too. Let's back her off a little bit. Just pull it out because I think that's probably too far. Oh, it, yes, it's... And it is now well and truly snug in there. I think she's stuck at that point for now. Next firing, maybe we won't put it in quite so far. Here, I'll hold it down while I do this. You think you can get back it off? Oh, she's hot. Your gloves are burning. Nope. No, just try it. <laughs> Don't want to break anything. Okay, so we've been half an hour now at the uh, designated temperature, or slightly above, uh, and now the instructions tell us to bring it up to what? To 2100. To 2100 for, 15 for 15 minutes. So we're going to open the valve a bit more, get it a bit hotter inside, bring it up in temperature, and then after that 15 minutes it tells us to tighten everything. One thing I should note here is with the kiln you do get this little repair kit that if something goes wrong, if you spill over inside or you crack something, that there's a little repair kit for repairing the refractory material inside and instructions on how to do it. Uh, the bone ash here. You're supposed to sprinkle this on the bottom of the kiln in case you have any uh, flux overflow. It, it'll prevent it from eating through the bottom of the kiln. And there's, uh, what is this one? liner restore, a bunch of different things, and instructions on how to use it if you need to repair your kiln. Detailed instructions in the back of the car. So Dad's mixing up some just, uh, some really basic flux right now, some really simple flux. We're not going anything complicated right now. All we're gonna do is we have a little bit of gold here that is all mostly gold little bit a little bit of garbage but mostly gold and we're going to try a, uh, just a simple melt later on we're not doing any fancy refining we're not uh, doing any of the the crazy chemistry in there we're just going to do a simple melt of that he's making up some flux to protect it as it's melting and also to grab any of the garbage that might be in there just tie it up in the flux and we're going to see if we can do our main job today is to temper the kiln of course but we of course want to play a bit so we're going to do uh, one simple little melt. We're just going by a recipe, a recipe off of Legends that gets just a uh, just your basic refining flux. And we're going to see second, if we can make second component. Um, silica. silica. Silica was again 8.25. The old guy is getting weak. <laughs> <Pretty on there. laughs> We're almost ready. We we're supposed to uh, get it up to the higher temperature, 15 minutes, and it's basically been that. So we're about to start tightening, tightening the bands. We do have one problem: doing these small um, melts that we want to do. Like that's not very much material in there, uh, but we have these big crucibles, so we're kind of overkill on the crucible for the size of melt we have and we do have a smaller crucible but it's ugly and old. It needs cleaning. It needs cleaning. So I think we're going to use the big one and just hope that we can get it fluid enough to pour out of such a big container. Last item. Last item. You're trying. Uh, potassium nitrate was 20%. This is where we cheat. And now we're worried that we're making gunpowder. Potassium nitrate is one of the components of gunpowder, so it's a little scary. But now that looked to be pretty granular potassium yep. nitrate you have. I yes, think it's it supposed is. to be a powder. Yeah, we're gonna take care of that right now. Do you need it? Do you need a? No, I got a smaller one of those for you. Yeah, a smaller there. one and a porcelain one would be nice. I do. One sec. 
So a little bit worried about the granular nature of that potassium nitrate, so that's going to go and uh, Step use the more pestle and grind it up a little bit more. Anyway. I guess we can put the gold straight into that and Just do the same thing, can't now. we? Yep, can go in here now. Right now? Yep. Oh, here we go. Let's get this on tape. The good stuff. Tape. Not that there's any tape in any of this stuff anymore. Uh, oh. oh yeah, you got a good amount of black sand in there. I, because I heated up to drive off the water, a lot of it just sort of went black color, so. I think that's still like 90% gold in there, Dad. Yeah. Should make a good little button. Okay, it looks like it's time for us to tighten this thing. Are we supposed to tighten it while the flame's still going? Yes, we turn it down afterwards. Okay. We want those bands to be hot and expanded. Right now, okay. now you get to hold it down by holding I'm it. I'm a little worried about my beard and that flame. Okay, you can come around this side. You're out of the camera. In the camera. Okay. So we're going to hold it down. You're going to hold it down while I get some out of the way. Probably both have eye protection on put this close to this thing. A little bit of infrared here, yeah. The top clamps took a lot more tightening than the bottom. They're also a lot hotter. Yeah, uh, speaking of hotter, the, le the leather does protect you from the heat for a bit. Okay. Actually, not that bad. No. Now, do you smell? Do I smell? That you smell I did have a shower this morning. <laughs> you probably smell, you smell my gloves getting too hot. I smell a chemical, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're bringing it up to idle temperature. Bring it back up. Now, what temperature do we want to melt at? That's around 21, but I'm just going by memory right now, and I could be wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, we should know with just a straight melt like this when it gets yeah. that fluid. Yeah. What we're planning to do right now, uh, we put the f first crucible in just to get it up to temperature a little bit. We're going to pull it out in a second, and we're going to put our first charge of flux and gold into it, and start heating it up and see if we can do a first melt. And we'll just pour it into the graphite uh, mold here, and let's hope we get a little button. So, Dad is starting to get the uh, charge ready. I'm going to lift the top off in a second. Dad will take the crucible out, put the good stuff in, and then put it back in. I'll put the top back on. We put on the face shields now because we have things hot and stuff going into the kiln. We don't want something popping out at us. So. Okay. Ready? Where's the, no, the, the furniture and the, and the crucible. Uh, or a heat sink in there, and I'm not up to temperature yet. I'm not up to idle temperature. But it should be fine for loading it now. Everything should be hot. Yes, we are now. <laughs> okay, you ready? The bottom of the crucible, as you can see, is bright orange.
camera's going down in there, we can get a good look at it as it starts melting. Six point three. 
Okay. So I ran it up, so we had a total of 10 grams in water. I wasn't really accurate because that scale is just gapping a few drops of uh, powder and I was way over way under. Okay. Okay. And that's, and then that's not much material once that melts. It's going to lose volume probably by 20 or 30. 30%. Breeze just came through. Yeah, they talked about that. I'll just go take the, the graphite and put, it, put on those. Make sure the video is still going. Bring the camera over and show what we just did. You, saw, you see all your gold, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so when, da when Dad poured it in, it hit the side of the mold rather than the bottom first, and looks like it hardened right away up on the side. So you see a bunch of gold up on the side where all the uh, all the flux, all the borax, everything went down to the bottom to harden. So. Um, and we were warned about that in the uh, PDF that's on the computer. Oh yeah. To take your pour slow so that it goes to the bottom of your mold and, and doesn't rush out, so that, so that your precious material doesn't rush out underneath the box. Okay. So we might want to heat that up again because right now we don't have a nice little bead. <laughs> well, let's see what we've gotten. Uh, yeah, we have a splash back. Yeah, so uh, let's let it cool, obviously. We'll pop it out of there and see what we got. And then we might just toss it back in. And what I noticed when I looked down the bottom of the kiln, or uh, the crucible, is it was clean. Yes. Clean and clear. Nothing stuck to the edge. Nothing no, it stuck to the cold top. It cooled down while we were moving. Right. I wonder how much gold is underneath that. I don't know how much gold yeah. was there, really. But there's definitely a whole bunch up on the side right now. Gold. I see gold. That should just be borax. Should be the flux. Should be, but yeah. Which we can reuse. I don't know if you read that in there. We can reuse this as the borax portion. Okay. What I, I plan don't know to why you would borax dirt cheap. What I plan to do with all of the extra fluxes is just keep them all um, in one spot, crush them down eventually, see if there's any beads, whatever, left in it. And then possibly just one big melt of all of them together and see if anything more precipitates out. That's quite interesting how much gold is there. Do you think that's all of it right there? I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely gold, gold, like it's bright it's gold. Be, yeah. It's very easy to leave this thing idle like that. I mean, this is using no fuel to speak of. We probably shouldn't be looking at this without eye protection on, because if that did pop right yes, now, it's yes. cool. Yes, yes. And if you'll notice it, a crack in it. Oh, yeah, it cracked all up. The whole yep. thing cracked. Yep. Which probably means we can tip it out now. What are we tipping it onto, into? We should probably tip it into this, eh?
Yes, we should have got that. <laughs> Let's go take the camera and have a look at this. There was a bigger bead in the bottom than we originally saw. We saw the flux head shattered in the pour mold. Yeah, so we, we tipped it out, it shattered completely and revealed the big lump that had settled into the bottom. We had a good amount of gold there. There was a lot of gold in there. <laughs> Did I really put that much in? That must have. That wasn't very much powder. That's a nice piece. Though we don't like it yet. We want a better pour than that. We want a prettier one. We want a prettier one. We're going to put that back in the uh, crucible, melt it down, and do a better job of pouring this time. Woo. All of a sudden we got really excited when we see gold. <laughs> <laughs> the gold fever. <laughs> now, should we be worrying, Dad, that it's starting to rain? That's a big hunk of gold. I know, I know water around molten metals is an absolute no-no. Yeah. But I have a feeling with this small amount, right. that any heat here is going to be evaporating the water. Yeah. Okay, so if you would like, I think we'll just use the, we'll use that same flux. Yep. And just drop it in there because our additions, our oxidizer and whatnot, have done their job already. So, yep. We are doing a video. I'm really intrigued. Confuse that fine powder you got. To what? That fine powder you got from the north. Mm, yeah. So we have to decide we, what's in there. If we could get a we could get a quarter or a half ounce out of that stuff, possibly. <laughs> what we put there should have been an eighth of an ounce. Uh no, a little less than that. I think it was a half ounce vial. Yeah. With a third full. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm also going to heat this up more. Oh, okay, yep. Okay. You see the chip that came off the top? Nope. 
last material here. Yeah, we also got some splatter. Ooh. Where did that come from? When, when you poured it in, it hit that side and jumped up this side. Ah. Yeah, I thought I saw that the first time. Okay, we still didn't get a great bead forming. As we poured in, it hit this side, it ran around and jumped up this side, and we actually even got some gold popping out. Put that back in. And hopefully we didn't get any falling around here also. So, practice, we're definitely going to need some practice of the practice. Pour, pouring yeah. part of it. But we do have some rain coming in right now, so we're going to have to uh, probably pack this up here. Okay, we got the pop-up tent over top to make sure we don't get any rain on something that really shouldn't have rain. And it looks like the heat is going to be okay and not melt our canvas. Canvas? Sure. Nylon? Yes, sir. Keeps your head warm. Yeah, we're gonna suffocate. <laughs> we'll have no <laughs> oxygen up here. <laughs> okay, we trying this again? Sure. Well, we can keep this aside, and then maybe do some of that sand to see what we get, and then combine them so we get weigh that piece. Example of the lump on the bottom of the flux. Oh yeah. But still not clean. No. Nope. Uh, clean. Poured down one side, came up the other. Yep. One last try. One last try. So we're going to try and do a clean one again. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anything we can do to help this pour get in the to bottom? slower. I have to pour it directly into the bottom. There's one thing I have to do. This has to be hot. We need more flux. I think we're pretty well okay on it. I can't think of anything. Here. Okay, we'll try one more time. There we go. 
that's the best one we've done ha had so yep. far. Let's flip it over. Yeah. <laughs> Hand me that piano. <laughs> Did you see it flake off? That's why we have eye protection it's on. Spalled. Yeah. Split it off. Hing, another piece came out. So the answer is you leave it cool down longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let it cool a bit more before you take it out. Uh, okay. Uh, it's really rusty in there. Oh, it's pretty. Look how shiny it is. <laughs> Look how shiny. Look how shiny it is. I want. I want to grab it, but I know it's that would hot. be a mistake. It's, he it's heavy. It's heavy. But, but it has a lot of heft to it. Look at that color. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's a little heavy. It's a little hot still. <laughs> I see a lot of gold. It doesn't take me long to look at it. <laughs> Beautiful little thing. Well, this is fun. <laughs> Nothing else is fun. <laughs> and now we took some very dirty gold. We now have some fairly clean gold. Okay, we're going for lunch. We'll be back and play more after lunch. Now we're just playing. It's kind of fun. Uh, we played around a little bit with trying to roast or to do some sulfide material, and it, it didn't turn out. I have to. I have to go and do some more research before I do more of that. So we're just going back to one more melt making one more little gold button. Gold buttons are fun. And then we're gonna pack up for the day and we're gonna go and do some research about what we need to do for some lethargic charges. So we're, we're gonna use some lead as a collector metal in um, a roasted sulfide. We're gonna roast first, then use lead as a collector metal and do some real good hard smelting with the real chemistry rather than just melting gold and playing. Right now we're just playing, it's kind of fun. I don't know when we'll get to play with that uh, next stuff. Uh, I'm away for a few weeks and pretty soon my dad's gonna be going off, going down south for his holidays. Uh, so I'm not sure if even we're gonna get this winter. We have to wait for spring, but we'll see. You all good? So here are the two uh, beads that we created in those two melts. Uh, this guy right here, he is 8 grams. That guy there is just over 7 grams. And that was just with some fine gold, that fine dirty gold that we had laying around. We melted it into a couple lumps of nice, clean, shiny gold. Beautiful little things. Fun to play with. My hands are so heavy. One almost perfect shape bead. The other one had a bit of splash up the side of the, the crucible, the 
mold. Two very nice pieces of gold. A lot of fun to play with. We've been playing all day, starting like dawn this morning, dusk tonight, and having a great blast. Having a, oh, let's not say blast. Not when we're making gunpowder. <laughs> not when we have the makings for gunpowder here. We had one no. small blast. We had one small blast when Dad tried to light the, for, the kiln with the lid still on and had a bit too much propane inside of it. We all woke up really quickly, yes. Yep, yeah, we had a great day. We made some mistakes. We're learning from our mistakes, and hopefully into the future we'll get to fix those mistakes. We do have to fix the kiln a little bit. We spilt some flux in the bottom. But um, yeah, we got some nice little uh, gold beads today, and off camera we played around a little bit with the, the uh, Letharge lead doing a proper smelt. Just trying to learn a little bit for when we go on to the video next so we can do it properly and not make the mistakes on video. But it was fun, and we will have another video coming out fairly soon on smelting. The equipment is all good. What's that? I say, the, tell them the equipment is all excellent that we were working with. The equipment is fantastic that we're working with. Fantastic. Everything was working perfectly. So uh, the guys from uh, Quick Kiln there, Pat from Quick Kiln, has done a great job. And everything worked as advertised and did a great job. So thank you, Dave, at 911 Metallurgist for hooking me up with Pat and getting this kiln out for us. Well, until the next video.